I'm sharing six budget-friendly meals for your family in today's video. Hello everyone, Jennifer here and welcome back to The Daily Connoisseur. I have another what's for dinner video for you today. This time we are sharing six budget-friendly family meals these are all super tasty crowd pleasers, but they're also very affordable to make. Today's video is a collaboration with my wonderful friend Robin from Faith and Flower. I love her cooking videos in particular, and she's going to be sharing six of her budget-friendly meals with you. So I will leave Robin's video down below. Make sure you check out her video as well. All right, let's jump right into the meals. Today, I'm going to be making tomato feta pasta. That's that viral TikTok recipe. Slow cooker cheesy beef and potato casserole. Chicken pot pie stromboli. Spinach mushroom quiche with herbed cheese. Tuna melts on croissants. And clam chowder. Let's start off with the tomato feta pasta. Now this is a very popular recipe right now. It went viral on TikTok. Everybody's talking about it and I made it at home. It's delicious and it's also very cost effective. So I'm breaking down the cost of all of these meals for you and you will see them here on the screen. Of course, these are the prices in California. Some things to keep in mind, for example, you might not need to buy tomatoes because you grow them. My tomatoes are not in yet, so I had to buy them. But the total for this meal was $11.17 divided by six people, which is what we have in our family. That comes to only $1.86 per person. I will have the recipes all written out in printable form for you in my corresponding blog post. So make sure you check that out. Okay, so you're going to preheat your oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And in a prepared casserole dish, you're going to add your cherry tomatoes along with the garlic, olive oil, salt, and pepper. And you're going to mix that all together so that the tomatoes are seasoned. Then you're going to put the feta in the middle. Now, if you have a block of feta, that's the best, but I couldn't find that, so I had the crumbled feta and it worked just fine. I took three sprigs of thyme from the garden and that's pretty much it. You bake this in the oven until it's ready and when it comes out, it looks so delicious. It's like the shallots are caramelized and the tomatoes um, are super juicy. So then you're going to pour your pasta on top. So cook the elbow macaroni according to the package directions and stir it all together. And it creates a delicious cheesy sauce with the tomatoes. You can top with fresh herbs if you like and a little bit of lemon zest. And this is so delicious. This is one of my new favorite recipes. I can see why it went viral. I'm serving this with a simple side salad and I'm using the Yo Mama's salad dressing, which are my favorite, and I will leave those linked down below. And that's in the creamy Italian. So tomato feta pasta, you've got to try it. It's so good. Okay, next let's talk about the slow cooker cheesy beef potatoes. The cost breakdown for this recipe was $12.96 and divided by six people, that's $2.16 a serving. This is a crowd pleaser, especially if you have children and you can make it in the slow cooker. So it's a wonderful meal to put in in the morning and then you can enjoy it in the evening. So I'm going to spray my crock pot with cooking spray and then I line it with the potatoes, which I have sliced as if you were making a gratin, and that is really what this is. I top that with ground beef. Now, I like to freeze a ground beef ahead of time. I like to make it and freeze it, and then use it for recipes like this, but you could also cook it up fresh as well. So I put ground beef on top, and then I'm going to put taco seasoning on top of that. And then this is slightly suspect, but I am using a can of cheddar cheese soup. That was what this recipe called for, and I found this recipe on Pinterest don't normally like that type of thing, but it was pretty good. You could definitely substitute that for a bechamel that you make as well. I'm going to top that with cheddar cheese and pour some broth over the top and then you cook it on low. And this is what it looks like. It's really hearty and very filling and everybody liked this dish. It's like a really cheesy ground beef taco potato gratin really good. And I'm serving this one with a side salad with some croutons and some shredded cabbage and carrot and the Yo Mama's 
ranch dressing. Okay, next let's talk about the chicken pot pie stromboli. I'm always looking for different ways to make our favorite dishes, and this is definitely a unique way to make a chicken pot pie. The breakdown for this recipe is $16.29 total divided by six people was $2.71 per serving. So in my cast iron skillet, I'm putting some melted butter and some celery and onion, and I'm going to mix that together until it's soft, along with some seasonings like salt and pepper. Then I'm going to stir in the flour and mix it for about a minute until the floury taste has uh, dissipated. And then I'm going to pour in my chicken broth and heavy cream. And I'm mixing this together and it's going to form that luscious, creamy bechamel sauce for the chicken pot pie. Into this, I'm going to put some frozen peas and carrots and then some already cooked chicken. So I had made chicken fajitas and I had some leftover chicken from it and I put it right in and it worked great. You could also use a rotisserie chicken for that as well. Mix this up uh, until it's cooked. Now, this is very important, but you need to let this cool. Do not put this into the puff pastry while it is hot. So you have to let it cool, wait a while, or put it in the refrigerator. And while you're doing that, it's time to roll out your puff pastry. So you could roll that out on your cutting board. Once the mixture is cooled, you could put it inside the puff pastry, and then you're going to sprinkle cheese on top of that, yummy, and then wrap the puff pastry around this mixture. And you're going to seal the edges with egg wash and the top put some slits into it and bake it in the oven. And it did kind of explode, but it was delicious. Puff pastry is always so good. And this was a fun way to eat chicken pot pie. And I serve it with a simple side salad again. Next is the spinach mushroom quiche with herbed cheese. I make this all the time and my secret ingredient in here sends it over the edge. But first the cost analysis, the total to make the quiche is $19.26 divided by six people comes to $3.21. Now, my special ingredient here is the Boursin cheese, and uh, that is the most expensive ingredient, so you could always substitute that for something else if it's too much. Basically, I start off with sauteing the shallots, and I just use shallots because that's what I had on hand, but you could use onions too. And I add mushrooms to this as well and some garlic, and then I top it with the spinach and let the spinach cook down. It really doesn't take very long at all. Into this, I crumble the Boursin herb cheese, and I love using herb cheese. It just adds such a good flavor to this quiche. It's really good, so I recommend you try it along with another cheese of your choice. You could do Monterey Jack or cheddar. And you're going to let this mixture cool slightly. In a separate bowl, you're going to mix together your eggs and your milk and uh, this is just the classic combination and how you can make really any quiche and I vary the ingredients all the time. Then roll out your pie crust uh, with some flour and place it in your deep dish pan. You're going to place the slightly cooled spinach cheese mixture, this looks so good, on top and then you're going to pour the egg mixture on top of that and prepare your pie by crinkling the edges and brushing it with egg wash and then you're going to bake it in the oven. And this is so delicious. I love this quiche. Some of the kids don't like it, but I like it. And if there's leftovers, I like to eat this for breakfast the next day. It's really delicious. And I'm telling you, try that herb cheese because it's so good. I'm having this with a salad with the sesame dressing from Yo Mama's. The next recipe is the classic tuna melt, but you know I like to make things a little bit fancy, so instead of sourdough bread, we're going with croissants today. So tuna melts on croissants, and the total is $13.34 divided by six, that's $2.22 per person. So it's a very affordable meal. So you're going to need tuna and various things to add crunch into it, like celery, pickles, apples, onion, you know, basically my favorite things, <laughs> but you can add whatever you like. So into your bowl, you're going to put your tuna along with some mayo, and then I like to add crunch and sweetness and that umami flavor from the pickles. So I have some chopped celery, chopped apple, some chopped pickle and some chopped green onion, so good. I season this all with garlic salt, that helps it just send it over the edge, it's the perfect seasoning for this. And I mix it all together and I top it on a croissant and top that with some cheese. Then you're going to put this in the oven and allow the cheese to melt and everything to get crispy, it's so good. <laughs> I love this uh, meal, it reminds me of the seaside or 
just being on vacation. I don't know. So that's a croissant uh, tuna melt and it's really delicious. So if you've never tried it on a croissant, I highly recommend that you do. I must have had the seaside on my mind because the final meal is homemade clam chowder. And the cost breakdown for this meal is $14.54 for the whole thing divided by six people, that's $2.42. So yes, you can make clam chowder at home. I'm not using fresh clams, but sometimes you just don't have them. Uh, but that makes this meal affordable. So you're going to start off by cooking your bacon. Now I had bacon that was already cooked from breakfast and I reserved four slices for this meal. So I didn't cook the bacon and I didn't use bacon grease to saute the um, celery, but if you have the bacon grease, leave that and saute the celery in it and it's really good. I'm adding the onion and the celery and I'm sauteing this over medium heat. And then I add all purpose flour and I stir for one minute. Then I add the milk, stock and bay leaf and I stir it until a thick sauce forms. And by the way, I like to use whole milk for this recipe. Uh, some recipes call for cream right away, but that's a bit too heavy for me. Then I add the potatoes and I cook until those are tender, about 15 minutes. And then I add the clams and I stir it to combine and I cook for a few more minutes, but not too long. You don't want the clams to get rubbery. Then I distribute this among soup bowls and I like to top it off with a little drizzle of heavy cream that just sends it over the edge with chopped bacon, hello, and some parsley. And this is a very satisfying, delicious soup. It's so, so good. Um, and it really does keep you full. You could eat this with a nice uh, loaf of crusty French bread and it would be so delicious. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. I hope you enjoyed these budget meals. If you enjoy my what's for dinner cooking videos, please give this video a thumbs up to let me know. Don't forget to check out Robin's budget meals. I will leave her video link down below. Thank you so much for joining me today on The Daily Connoisseur. Keep calm and remain classy, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.